Well, good morning. What a beautiful morning. I guess I say that every day, don't I? It is Friday, June the 7th, and it is a beautiful day the Lord has given us. Um, I just want to take a quick moment. As I turned on the camera, there was a flash come up on my screen from YouTube that um, the Israeli forces have uh, made an all-out attack on Hezbollah headquarters and strongholds in the north um, and that a full-scale war with Hezbollah now in the north is is highly imminent um, so I ask you to pray for Israel to pray for those soldiers and airmen to pray for the people of Israel that they can once and for all put an end to this violence there's so much anti-semitism around the world lord we ask you to soften their hearts to take away their stiff necks and to realize that israel has been a blessing to the world we ask all this in the name of jesus christ amen we're going to go straight into scripture chapter 5 of deuteronomy and yesterday was quite a hunk of scripture wasn't it there was a lot to read there and moses called all israel and said unto them, Hear, O Israel, the statutes and judgments, which I speak in your ears this day, that you may learn them, keep, and do them. The Lord our God made a covenant with us in Horeb. The Lord made not this covenant with our fathers, but with us, even us, who are all of us here alive this day. The Lord talked with you face to face in the mount, out of the midst of the fire, I stood between the Lord and you at that time to show you the word of the Lord, for you were afraid by reason of the fire and went not up into the mount, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Here we go. Thou shalt have none other gods before me. Thou shalt not make any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the waters beneath the earth thou shalt not bow down thyself unto them nor serve them for i the lord thy god am a jealous god visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Keep the Sabbath day to sanctify it, as the Lord thy God hath commanded thee. Six days thou shalt labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thine ox, nor thine ass, nor any of the cattle, nor any stranger that is within thy gates, that thy manservant and thy maidservant may rest as well as thou. And remember, thou wast a servant in the land of Egypt, and that the Lord thy God brought thee out thence through a mighty hand, and by a stretched out arm. Therefore the Lord thy God commandeth thee to keep the Sabbath day. Honour thy father and thy mother, as the Lord thy God hath commanded thee, that thy days may be prolonged, that it may go well with thee in the land which the Lord giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Neither shalt thou steal, neither shalt thou hear false witness, bear false witness against thy neighbor. Neither shalt thou desire thy neighbor's wife, neither shalt thou covet thy neighbor's house, his field or his manservant or his maidservant, his ox or his ass, or anything that is thy neighbor's. These words the Lord spake unto all your assembly in the mount out of the midst of fire of the cloud and of the thick darkness with a great voice and he added no more and he wrote them in two tablets of stone and delivered them unto me 
And it came to pass, when you heard the voice out of the midst of the darkness, for the mountain did burn with fire, that you came near unto me, even all the heads of your tribes and your elders. And you said, Behold, the Lord our God hath showed us his glory and his greatness, and we have heard his voice out of the midst of the fire. We have seen this day that God doth talk with men, and he liveth. Now, therefore, why should we die? For this great fire will consume us if we hear the voice of the Lord our God any more than we shall die. For who is there of all flesh that have heard the voice of the living God speaking out of the midst of the fire as we have and lived? Go thou near and hear all that the Lord our God shall say, and speak thou unto us all that the Lord our God shall speak unto thee, and we will hear it and do it. And the Lord heard the voice of your words. When you spake unto me, and the Lord said unto me, I have heard the voice of the words of this people, which they have spoken unto thee. They have well sped, well said all that they have spoken. Oh, that there were such a heart in them, that they would fear me, and keep all my commandments always, that it might be well with them and with their children forever. Go say to them, Get you into your tents again. But as for thee, stand thou here by me, and I will speak unto thee all the commandments and the statutes and judgments which thou shalt teach them, that they may do them in the land which I give them to possess it. You shall observe to do therefore as the Lord your God hath commanded you. You shall not turn aside to the right hand or to the left. You shall walk in all the ways which the Lord your God hath commanded you, that ye may live, and that it may be well with you, and that ye may prolong your days in the land which ye shall possess. Amen. Do you see the distinction between commandments and the statutes? And the judgments? This is the law, the fulfillment of the law that Jesus Christ referred to. All of those things, apart from the Ten Commandments, all of those things were laying the foundation for Jesus Christ. He is the fulfillment of the prophecies on the law. He is the final sacrifice. He is the Lamb of God who took away the sins of the world. As John the Baptist said, but the Ten Commandments stand written in stone, told to the people by the voice of God. There's nowhere, anywhere, where it dispenses with any one of them. Sometimes only some of them are referred to. So don't mistake that for a let out, okay? Now I'm no Seventh-day Adventist or anything. I, I am in no denomination. I am not a pastor. I am not qualified. I did not go to seminary. All I do is read the Word of God and ask for the Holy Spirit to give me discernment and wisdom as to what it says. And I think that even you will have to agree that that's pretty clear the distinction between the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments. The Ten Commandments stand forever. The statutes and the judgments or rulings, the 613 Mosaic laws as they're referred to, to keep the Hebrew people, the Israelites, to give them a, a, an, a, an attempt at righteousness and holiness. But you know, God says later on, one of the prophets, he says, I knew they couldn't do it. The plan all along was to send Jesus Christ. But he had to institute this system so that they could understand 
that when Jesus came and became the final sacrifice, that all of that was now concluded. And that all you have to do is accept Jesus Christ. Accept him. He asked Martha, he said, do you believe me? I've often said that you could add that, not literally, but in your mind, because we're not to add to or take away from the words of the Bible. But imagine that when Jesus Christ said, it is finished on the cross, you could put in brackets there or in square brackets, you know, an explanation. Do you believe me? Because we're told, if you believe, if you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, who was born of man, who lived, who died on the cross, who rose on the third day, who lived on this earth for 40 days and then ascended into heaven to save us from our sins. He took our sin debt and paid it in full. If you believe that with all your heart, not just lip service, you got to believe it. You got to believe that he paid a debt that you could never pay. How grateful would you be if someone came up to you and said, I've just paid your mortgage. You'd have a friend for life there, wouldn't you? You'd have a friend for life. I've just paid your mortgage. You owe me nothing. I just want you to believe that it's paid. And you don't have to pay that mortgage anymore. That $1,000, that $1,500, that $2,000 a month, whatever it is you're paying off on your mortgage, it's gone. I paid it in full. Well, Jesus Christ paid our sin debt in full 2,000 years ago. And you want to be his best friend. You want to cling to Jesus Christ because he paid a price that you could never pay. Do you see how this works? To be grateful to someone, to be eternally grateful to someone who did such a magnificent thing for you. To feel it in your heart, in your body, in your soul that that debt is paid. I don't have to pay that debt anymore. I don't have to burn in hell to pay for my sin debt. I don't have to be in eternal darkness and total separation from God. I have accepted that Jesus Christ paid that for me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And the best is yet to come. This life is but a mere vapor. The promise of eternity in heaven with Jesus Christ and God the Father and the Holy Spirit. That, that is worth it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. He went to prepare a mansion. In his Father's house there are many mansions. I go to prepare for you. Oh, my word. He's preparing a place for us. He's anxiously waiting for the Father right now to say, go get your bride. Just as I told in the Galilean wedding, the explanation of the Galilean wedding, the Father says, go get your bride. And the bride is carried on a litter. She is floated along in the air. Just as we are going to do, we're going to be taken up in the air to meet Jesus in the first heaven, in the skies. And the dead shall precede us. And their decayed bodies are going to reunite with their soul and their spirit and have new bodies. And we will be transformed and caught up and join them all together. And from that moment on, wherever Jesus is, there will we be as well. No matter where he is, we will be there. When he comes at the second coming of Jesus Christ, at the end of the tribulation period, we will be with him riding on white horses. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that? It's not science fiction. It's not fantasy. It is reality. 
it is real because he loves us. And I love you too. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. Speak to you tomorrow.